of Pope Coast Studios in Oklahoma City. You're watching the Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. It's time for our inbox segment. You send us your questions. We might just answer them here on the inbox. Barry, let's get right to it. Let's start with Roy. Roy says, how will Kevin Sumlin do at Texas A&M? He appears to be off to a fast start with a top 15 recruiting class in 2012. I believe it's all about coaching. If he can coach as good as he can recruit, watch out. Well, I think, uh, you know, Kevin Sumlin's going to do pretty good at, uh, pretty well at uh, Texas A&M. I think he's going to win his share of games in the SEC. I think he's going to recruit well. I think everybody's going to be excited. And then in four years, he's going to get fired because that's what they do at Texas A&M. Coaches go seven and five, five and seven, seven and five, and then they get themselves fired. So I don't see why Kevin Sumlin would be any different. This is a school that fired R.C. Slocum. Uh, Mike Sherman almost went from, he, he, went, he got fired at, at A&M and then was a finalist for an NFL head coaching job. So the football world sees Mike Sherman as a really good coach. Texas A&M, not so much. I think uh, Kevin's a little bit swimming upstream, going into the SEC, trying to meet uh, the, uh, uh, the unrealistic expectations in Aggieland. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Kevin's uh, not long for that job. He's probably just like every other guy that's held the Texas A&M job. Yeah, and, you know, you talk about guys that have gone 6-6, six and 7-5 six, and five and gotten fired, uh, maybe even 8-4 and four have gotten fired at Texas A&M. I don't think it's going to be any easier to go 7-5, and 8-4 and four in the SEC, Barry. I mean, we've talked about this in the past. You go into the SEC and those winnable games, it just drops. This last year was, was actually a little bit of an aberration in the SEC in that it was very, very top-heavy. You saw, obviously, great teams. Two teams went on to play for the national championship. Arkansas was really good. After that, you saw drop-offs. You saw Florida not as good. Um, you saw some other teams that, you know, historically have filled pretty good teams not be as good. So that's not going to be the case every year. And very frankly, I think it's a little bit still up in the air how good a coach Kevin Sumlin is in development. Obviously, they did good things at Houston, but that year Case Keenum was hurt, that was not a good year at Houston. So he's really going to have to get after it if he wants to be there any longer than three or four years. All right, back to the inbox. This one comes from Gary. Gary says, is there something wrong with my TV? Hornets uniforms green on the back, blue in the front. Marginally better than Memphis's throwback uniforms, Barry. Those well, were some wild uniforms. Yeah, I don't, I don't like them, but it's a celebration of Mardi Gras. It reminds me of the Lawton High football pants, if you remember. The, maybe they still wear them down in Lawton. Red in front, white in back. It's very disconcerting. You watch and you say, everybody's wearing different colored, uh, different colored uh, pants. Same with these Hornets. Um, I will say this. He's right. Much, uh, it's much better. The Hornets much better than those Memphis throwbacks. The yellow and the green, not a good look at all. Some of the throwbacks, you've seen the Clippers wear some of the light blues. Some of the uh, throwbacks are okay. Some of them are a little hard on the eyes. Yeah, then I actually saw those, uh, those New Orleans uniforms in person. I was there for that game. And, yeah, it's a little bit strange. You, your, your eyes sort of get adjusted to everybody being – it's actually, I think, purple uh, was the other color. You get kind of adjusted to purple being the color, and then all of a sudden everybody's in green. I, it, it really is kind of crazy. But I think we all know how big Mardi Gras is in New Orleans. But just – Barry mentioned that's what they're for, but I tell you what, I don't know if you fully appreciate it, um, even even if you do know what a big deal it is, because the 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 broadcast crew they were all wearing medals around their necks in honor of Mar Mardi Gras here the other night. I mean, it wasn't they weren't even in New Orleans and they were celebrating Mardi Gras, so huge deal. That's why they do it, and you know, yeah, they're not great, but. I'm not sure what else you do. All right, back to the inbox. Jerry brings in with this. Is Joe Castiglione a little overrated? It seems OU sports, besides football, are very average. The only thing he's done well is hire Stoops. Sorry, I almost laughed through that last part well, of the question. But I, here's the question. <laughs> is, is Joe C. overrated? I, I actually didn't know he was rated at all. I haven't seen, any, I haven't seen the polls on ADs. Actually, you hear a lot that uh, Joe is uh, the best athletic director in America or one of the best in America. I actually don't know how you know that. I mean, uh, who's the athletic director at Wisconsin? Barry Alvarez. Most people might not know that. Who's the athletic director at Connecticut, at uh, Stanford? <coughs> These are questions. We don't know who the ADs are. We don't know how good anybody ranks. The question is, how good of an AD at Oklahoma is Joe C? He's an excellent athletic director. Took over a program floundering financially, has righted that ship. Only thing he's done well is hire Bob Stoops. <laughs> If, if that's true, that's still enough because Stoops has uh, restored the uh, football uh, greatness, got the, uh, got the program and the athletic department financially in great shape. 
So, no, Joe C. has done an excellent job. Yeah, and, and you know what? He didn't just hire Bob Stoops. He's retained Bob Stoops, which to me, you know, Bob's been, uh, he's seen job offers from all sorts of different places and, and has never taken the jump ultimately. Now, I think that that can be attributed to several people, but you have to include Joe Castiglione in that. And, yeah, I, I mean, hiring Bob Stoops and retaining Bob Stoops it gives them a chance to be competitive in so many other areas. Barry, you mentioned the financial difficulties they were in. You cannot be competitive in anything else unless football is really good. And that's just the way it goes in college athletics right now, the economics of it. So to have football where it is gives them a chance. Are they down in some other areas? Maybe. But you financially have a chance to at least go out and compete. All right, back to the inbox for one more. This one comes from a different Jerry, not the same Jerry as before, but this Jerry asks, how can Sam Presti justify keeping Kendrick Perkins with the contract he signed last year and getting little or nothing done? In my opinion, he is a weak link on a very good NBA team. Well, I mean, Kendrick Perkins is an incredible weak link if you're playing fantasy basketball. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to pad the stat sheet. He's not going to blow up your, your rotisserie team. Kendrick Perkins does the stuff you don't see. He's like the left guard on a football team. Uh, it's, it's like saying, uh, you know, Gay Biker doesn't do anything for the OU football team. Kendrick Perkins plays defense. He screens. He blocks out. He gets in the other team's way. He does the dirty work you have to do so that Westbrook and Harden and Durant are free to run around and score points. Kendrick Perkins is an excellent player, and here's how you know. You know who would love to have Kendrick Perkins back? The Celtics. Did you see those guys? The way they, uh, they mobbed Kendrick after the game. They love Kendrick Perkins. They know what he brought the, to their team, their toughness. They miss Kendrick. The Thunder would miss him if he was not here. Yeah, definitely so. And, you know, I think of Kendrick Perkins like I think of uh, Tyson Chandler, a guy that is being sorely missed in Dallas. I think Dallas is carrying on better without him than Boston is without Perkins. But, you know, that's the type of toughness. You need a guy who's willing to stand in the middle, to take some abuse, to keep guys from driving to the hole. Yes, they, the Thunder has that in Nick Collison, but not to the level of Kendrick Perkins. And Barry, I've been impressed by his his uh, transformation in the offseason with his offensive game. He's shooting free throws better. He looks better offensively. He's not Kevin Garnett yet. I mean, I'm not saying that, but he's not the offensive liability that he was last year. And defensively, he's as strong as ever. So there's a lot of ways Sam Presti can justify keeping Kendrick Perkins. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma.